Alan Amici, Ron Tain, Melvin Gordon, Monty Ball, Jonathan Taylor, Braylon Allen. Wisconsin has established itself as RBU, but now with the advent of the Dairy Raid and Phil Longo as the offensive coordinator in Madison, is Wisconsin still able to maintain their status as a running back factory? From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. When Luke Fickle hired Phil Longo as his offensive coordinator last season, there were some questions about what the run game might look like in Madison, Wisconsin. It has been one of the running back factories in college football, and we know Phil Longo historically during his time at North Carolina has opened it up a little bit offensively. To talk about that dynamic and to really talk about all things Wisconsin run game within the Dairy Raid, we welcome in Ryan Herrings from Locked on Badgers to talk all about it. Ryan, I want to start off uh, really with this. Do you think considering what Wisconsin has been and now what the Dairy Raid and Phil Longo and what that is supposed to be at Wisconsin, do you still think the Badgers can still be that RBU type of factory in the backfield? Yeah, I, I do. It's definitely an interesting question, right? And you hit on it when you look back at the the waves of talent the Badgers have put out from that running back position specifically. It's some of the not just great running back. It's some of the great college running backs of all time when you look at some of the seasons they put together. So it is a fair question. Ultimately, though, I think that question is a little Phil Longo independent, right? Because if you look at that talent, what would Melvin Gordon have done in a more spread out offense? He would have been Melvin Gordon, right? Like, <laughs> yep. you know, what would James White have done? He would have been James White. What would Monte Ball have done? Like, so there is an element of talent just matters. And they had a string of identifying and developing talent at an elite level, kind of like I was done in the defensive backfield, right? They just... Mm -hmm. If they get that level of talent, I don't think it matters what Phil Longo does. So ultimately, I think it's more about can they find the, the talent that they did in the past and continue continue developing at that level. Sometimes it's about the Jimmys and the Joes, not necessarily the X's and yes. the O's. So we know what Wisconsin has been with their run games before Luke Fickle and before Phil Longo really showed up. It's... Line up a bunch of farm boys on the offensive line, get some downhill run game, and go at it. But now you look at this offense, it's a little bit more balanced. It's a little bit more open. Maybe there aren't as going to be as many defenders up in the box. Do you think that balanced attack is going to uh, have this Wisconsin run game kind of be in the same mold of what they have been? Just put up the same type of production, just maybe look a little bit different? Another great question. I, the same type of production, probably not. Could it be as efficient or more efficient? Yes. Like they're not going to put the yardage up on the ground that they did because they're just not going to give the running backs the ball as much. But I will point out one thing I think people get a little too carried away with. And listen, Wisconsin running backs have said it. So the narratives out there is how oh, there's so many people in the box. You know, if we spread it out, I, I don't have to run into eight or nine man boxes. But I think sometimes what gets forgotten or not talked about is, yeah, there's nine people in the box, but you also have two tight ends and a fullback. Yep. You know, if you spread it out, Sure, the, the defense loosens up, but you're also removing blockers from that that blocks as well. So I don't know. There, there's an element of Phil Longo. I, what Longo wants to do ultimately is he wants to be able to take advantage of what the defense gives him, right? You mentioned it. He had multiple years in the ACC. North Carolina, second in the ACC in rushing in 2019, second in 2020, second in 2021. He is totally cool handing the ball off and dominating on the ground. No issues there whatsoever from Longo, but – the difference from Longo with Wisconsin in the past is now if the defense says, all right, we're going to take that away. Now Longo wants the ability to have an offense that can pivot and counterpunch. And that's really what Wisconsin struggled to do at the end of the Chris era is they couldn't counterpunch when the defense loaded up to take away the running game. Longo wants the ability to hit you with either. So can the deep off running game put up the same type of numbers? Probably not because they're just not going to lean on it as heavily as they did in the past. But could it be more efficient with lesser carries? Absolutely. I think, again, it goes back to the talent, but I think that's absolutely what Wisconsin fans are looking towards. I think when Phil Longo really came in, they saw the Sam Howells, they saw the Drake Mays, they saw that. But I think there was one year, I forget specifically which year it was, but there were two 1,000-yard rushers mm -hmm. on, a North, on a North Carolina football team. So he has no problem running the football. I think it's all about balance um, on the yes. offensive side of the ball. And that balance is going to be on display 
this season. So let's talk about the here and now. The Braylon Allen era has now come and gone in Madison, Wisconsin. You've got Chesma Lucy and you've got Tawee Walker coming over from Oklahoma. Let me get my Wisconsin fandom out here. I love what Walker brings to the table. I watched the offense that he was in at Oklahoma. And then I watch what he's going to come into at Wisconsin. I think he's going to be a really big-time player for this Badger team. How do you see this running back room really molding into this offense in 2024? Yeah, I, I love it with, with Walker, man. Let me, I'll, I'll start there because that's where you kind of let off. I was talking to a guy who covers Oklahoma, and I said, hey, what is Walker? What is he going to bring? And he said he just raved about him. He said, yeah, be a fan favorite, incredibly physical. This is a guy who had seven touchdowns last year in the Big 12, right? Averaged over 500 yards. Um, so this is a real compliment. This isn't a guy who brought over and they hope they see something. They've already seen it. And he's going to give you a physical presence in the offense between the tackles. Uh, you're talking goal line, short yardage. That was actually an area that Longo in this offense struggled in last year, picking up that short yardage, which, you know, Braylon Allen at times was dinged up. Malusi was hurt. Yep. Um, Walker's the answer to that. Walker will be your short yardage guy. He'll be your goal line guy. Yeah, super physical. Love his fit into the offense. Um, and then Chez, Chez is – Badger fans are a little split on Chess, right? Um, multiple years, injuries. He had injuries back in Clemson. He's never been able to stay healthy. Last year, six yards per carry, but only four games, right? And ultimately, availability is is what you're judged on. If, if you can't stay on the field, right, it, it doesn't really matter how good you are. Uh, from a talent standpoint, neither of these guys are in that upper tier that Wisconsin's had, right? Neither of these guys are a, a Gordon, a Ball, a Clement, a White, yeah. but they're both – on the like A to F scale, they're both Bs. I think they're both above average starting caliber running backs, and I think they're both going to play pretty well this year as long as they stay healthy. But there's not there's not an all first team all Big Ten player that's going to get a lot of reps this year. And that kind of goes into what the, this, this discussion is all about here: is that can they continue that legacy of pounding out those top Big Ten running backs? And I think it's okay if they don't get Ron Danes and Melvin Gordon's and mm -hmm. Monty Balls and guys like that, because there's more to this offense at Wisconsin. Let's talk about the future, because the future is pretty bright at this position as well. You look at Dylan Jones coming in as a true freshman this year, consensus four-star type of guy. You look at Darian Dupree. High three, low four, depending what service uh, you really look at. What do you think of these guys in terms of the future of the running back position? And can maybe one or both of these guys see the field in 2024? Yeah, you, you see me start to smile when you bring up those yep. two guys. Um, <laughs> really, really talented, really, really talented running backs out of the prep ranks. Um, you know, it's interesting, both those guys, this is actually a three running back class, and those two get the headlines. Getting Atuka uh, was the second running back in that group. And there was thoughts when they took him, oh, they're not going to be able to get a third. Well, talking to the staff and talking to some people involved in, in Gideon's recruitment, he's not a plan B, right? So they consider – they think they got three plan A guys last year. It's the two you mentioned. And Atuka is kind of in the Tywee Walker mold, right? Bowling ball. Uh, someone told me he's a bowling ball with legs, and that's the type of guy you're going to get. So they love the group they brought in last year. Let's start with Dylan Jones. I think he's a pro-style – elite four-star running back this was a guy alabama made a late run on tried to get in on his recruitment took multiple visits to wisconsin elite blue blood programs tried with him all the way up to the end Came, comes out a really good program on the east coast catches the ball physical can block runs between the tackles has enough speed i think he's a pro guy i, I think he's one of the safest bets for a pro guy out of that class at that 24 class now dupree comes in um he's mentioned high three low four star that's another guy who had late offers from blue bloods trying to get involved in him Think of him as more of a James White type, really good in open field, catches the ball. You think about Phil Longo, he loves that type of weapon. Um, so the two complement each other really well. I think that's about as good of a running back class as Wisconsin's had in a long time. Now players still have to develop, right? Um, and we live in the transfer portal era, that which we all know. So you, you, it's hard to project three years down the road. It, you know, right. one of these guys probably won't be on the roster, but um, it's, it's a very high upside group. In terms of seeing the field this year, it's difficult. Neither of those players, Jones or Dupree, enrolled early. And that just yeah. – it's so hard as a freshman if you don't enroll early. Now, Atuka did enroll early, and maybe that's going to lead to a few reps. But I, there's not going to be many to go around after Chez and Ty Wee, or Ty Wee Walker. So I wouldn't anticipate a big role this year. But next year, either one of those guys could take a massive jump in this offense.
And there's depth in that running back room with rotational pieces, the Jackson Akers, the Kate Jacobellis, um, also of the world in that running back room um, as well. So what would you say are the general vibes as it pertains to this Wisconsin offense? We've kind of given an outline of maybe what to expect now and in the future in terms of the running game. But what's the general feeling that you sense from Badger Nation as it pertains to this offense maybe reaching their potential? I've been saying it all offseason long, going full longo uh, this season. I would say uh, uh, cautiously optimistic, right? I, there, there's, a, there's a segment of Badger fans and the segment of media that is like this too that covers the Badgers that have talked about being a little hoodwinked last year, right? You had these, these uh, Longo coming in. Then you had Tanner Mordecai coming in, the gunslinger from SMU. Then you had C.J. Williams, a four-star from USC, and you got Bryson Green. And I think Badger fans were a little – it was like Christmas morning, right? And, <laughs> and then it was kind of like – Ah, but Christmas morning led to socks from grandma. And <laughs> I, I think Badger fans in general are, are a little reserved because of they, they got their hopes a little too high last year. I, I've pretty consistently said last year's not this year. Like I, I don't don't let that over influence how you feel going into this year. I think Badger fans are cautiously optimistic. I think uh, most people believe year two and long system will be a little bit better. The receivers are going to be a little more developed. Um but yeah, I think I think cautiously optimistic. Uh, there, there is definitely a sense of we kind of need to see it on the field. Now, personally, I'm pretty excited. Like the Badgers have a loaded slate this year. Um, I'm excited to see big time games, and I think the national media is sleeping on them a little bit. But I do think it's probably more of like an eight to, eight and four, nine and three at the top end of the scale season for the Badgers. Boy, I am trying to grow. <clears throat> growing up in the state of Wisconsin, I cannot remember a home slate like this no. at Camp Randall Stadium with teams like Alabama and Oregon and Penn State um, on that schedule uh, as well. Ryan, it's always great to talk to you. Ryan Herrings from Locked On Badgers. Catch him on YouTube, uh, your audio podcast platform. Also got a good thing going on with the community over there on the Locked On Badgers Discord. Ryan, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.